School of Physics students, this is Mr. Downing. Let's do some practice with universal gravitation. So here's our equation right here. The force of gravity is equal to this constant g. Now this constant g, g equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Okay, that's just a constant. We'll always use that number. M1 and M2 is the first and second mass, and D is actually distance squared. So what happens to FG if M1 is increased by 4? So my standard, if everything stayed the same, so G would be 1, mass would be 1, mass would be 1, distance squared would be 1. That would give me the normal standard regular force. But if I made a change, so I'm keeping G, M1, I'm going to increase to 4. Didn't change m2, didn't change distance. This gives me four times the force. So whatever the original force is, after I change mass by four, the last force is now four times bigger. So let's do this one. If both masses are increased by four, okay? So this time I put in a four for both masses. My distance is still the same though. This is gonna give me 16 times more force. Now, force and mass are directly proportional, so the forces get bigger as the masses get bigger. Now, the distance, so the distance between the masses is increased by 4. So I still have the same mass, but my distance is increased. Now, this is still 1 on top, but it's 16 on bottom, so it's 1 16th. So it's actually making my force significantly smaller. Okay, let's move down a little bit. Let's look at a couple of those more tricky ones. So let's look at like number seven. So F equals, still has the same G, it never changes, it's constant. And then my first mass is increased by two, the second mass by three, and my distance is decreased by four. Decrease doesn't mean negative, we're actually looking at a fraction. And remember, it's squared. So two times three is six over one sixteenth, six divided by one sixteenth, actually 96 times more force. Okay, let's look up another one. M1 is increased by 6, M2 decreased a half, the distance by 3. Okay, so 6 times a half, that's 3, 3 squared is 9, I'll reduce that to one third the force. Okay, nine, nine looks tricky. If the force is exerted on M1 by M2 is 50, then what is the force exerted on M2 by M1? For this one, look up Newton's third law. Now let's do an example on the back. So what is the force on M1 if its mass is 30 kilograms and the mass of M2 is 50 kilograms and they are separated by four meters, okay? Let's start how we'll start any problem. Let me write down those numbers. Okay, this would be a mass, and this is a mass. Since we have two masses, we'll label one and two. This is a distance. Okay, then what we're looking for here in step three, what is the force? Okay, pick out our equation. Yes, you should write it every time, even though these problems are all the same. Step five, I already have my force by itself. So force is equal, remember I wrote down the constant earlier. My G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, parentheses. My M1 is 30, my M2 is 50, my D is four squared. Okay, now don't let this confuse you, the scientific notation. In our calculator, there are two ways to do it. We can do 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Now, of course, we're going to want to put parentheses around it. Yes, I can use that number just fine. There's a shorthand way to do it. I can just do 6.67. Then there's this yellow E right here. So I can hit second E. That's where this little E comes from. 
e negative 11. That'll work too. So this e stands for the times 10 to the. Okay. So do 6.67 e negative 11 times 30 times 50 divided by 4 squared. So that gives me my answer, which is 6.25 times 10 to the negative 9th newtons. So this E right here is this times 10 to the, that's how it's translated. Okay, let's do one more. Let's look at, let's look at number 13. So what is the force on M1 if its mass is 3 times 10 to the negative fourth kilograms, and the mass of M2 is 5 times 10 to the negative fifth kilograms, and they are separated by 2 times 10 to the negative fourth meters. Okay, so that's my M1, M2, distance. I know this from the units. The kilograms are the masses, the meters is the distance. And I'm still looking for the force of gravity here. Notice how I'm trying to keep everything nice and organized, nice and clean. Small things can make a difference, like writing the two a little bit too high might make it look squared, or writing it too low might make you forget to square it, so be careful. Okay. Also notice I am writing down, plugging in my numbers before I go to my calculator. That prevents me making mistakes, especially on one like this. So M1 is 3 times 10 to the negative fourth, M2 5 times 10 to the negative fifth over 2 times 10 to the negative fourth squared. Okay? Do use your parentheses. They'll also help you see that there's four things. G, M1, M2, D squared. Otherwise, all those numbers might start to run together. So, 6.67 E negative 11 times 3 E negative 4 times 5 e negative 5. Notice I'm not putting times in between there. I could, it wouldn't make a difference, but because they're next to each other, it's going to times it for me. Divided by 2 e negative 4 squared. The force of gravity equals 2.50 times 10 to the negative 11. Because it's a force, it's measured in newtons. This problem might look different. The numbers might look strange to you because they're in scientific notation, but they still follow the same steps. They still follow the same logic. They are still solved the same way.